Gemini, what is going on with you? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan Hill from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Gemini love reading. In this reading today, we are going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. I'm going to do that by getting one card to represent the mutual point of interest between the two of you here in April 2024. Then I'm going to get three cards for you, Gemini, three cards for your person, and then I'm going to clarify everything with the second deck just to make sure we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection of yours. So let's get on with this Gemini love reading. What's one card for what's the mutual point of interest? Okay, we'll take two. No big deal. What's going on with you, Gemini? What's going on with Gemini as it relates to their romantic person of interest? A lot of connection between them. Got some flip over here. Let's get one more for Gemini. What's going on? Padding. One to talk. What's going on with your person, Gemini? What's going on with Gemini's romantic person interest here in April 2024? Okay, let's get one more for Gemini's person, please. What's going on with them? Taking an extra one there, too. No big deal. Might have too many crystals on my table. If there is a such thing, I'm running out of space here. Bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading. Nine of Swords. This is Gemini energy. This is an energy of mental anguish. This is thinking about something so much with all this fear and worry behind your thinking that it becomes physically stressful this can be sleepless nights nightmares can't fall asleep can't stay asleep can't eat can't concentrate on what i'm doing because my mind won't shut up here this is not a pleasant energy this is fear and worry and anxiety looks like about holding on to something i have four of pentacles below that this is capricorn energy of holding on tightly to something and not wanting to let go of it Looks like trying to hold on to a commitment here. I have the Hierophant next, which is the Taurus Major Arcana card. This is an energy of being committed to something bigger than you. In a relationship, this would be like being fully committed to the relationship, trying to take things to the next level, advance it, going like to living together, engaged, being married, something like that. There's this fear, worry, and anxiety about holding on to something you don't want to lose, which looks like some sort of a committed relationship. I have King of Pentacles right behind that. Son of a biscuit. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I have Queen of Pentacles out here as two, one of the two cards that came out in the energy affecting you both. This is a husband type energy. This is either Taurus or Virgo energy. This is usually like half of the equation that builds the Ten of Pentacles. The other half is this Queen of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is about being combined together physically, like physically building a life together. This would be half the equation that does that. So I've got two references already here to heavy commitment, whether that's living together or engaged or married. This is we're looking at a, a committed relationship. Oh, sheesh. Right under that King of Pentacles is the Seven of Swords. This looks like husband getting told on here. If not husband, you know, significant other is getting told on here. This is Aquarius energy. This is lying, cheating, stealing, deception, sneaking around behind someone's back, trying to get away with something that they shouldn't be trying to get away with. That's not always the meaning of the card. It's got a couple other meanings. The person on the card is stealing these swords because he doesn't want to be hurt by those swords. He doesn't want those swords to be used against him to hurt him. So he steals them to make sure that can't happen. So this can represent an energy of self-preservation, like not wanting to be hurt. Not really adding up there. This can also represent leaving something behind because he can only carry five swords and he has to leave these other two behind. That's possible. It's possible that it's more than one of those things at the same time and it's just different layers to the onion, so to speak. But this is really looking like either husband has done something that they shouldn't have done. If not husband, significant other has done something that they shouldn't have done. And now they're having all this fear, worry, and anxiety about it because they don't want to lose you. They don't want to lose this commitment that they have with you. That's what it's looking like. Or maybe you're fearful, worried, and anxious about holding on to this 
commitment because of what they did. Either way, that looks like the general gist of what this reading is going to talk to me about. We might have to come back to that more as we go along. This mutual point of interest is shared energy that affects both of you in some way here in April 2024. Doesn't always affect you both exactly the same way. Sometimes they do this and you feel the consequences of it or vice versa. Sometimes they say or do something that puts you in this state or vice versa. Sometimes it's legitimately something external that is affecting both of you. The mutual point of interest for the two of you, Gemini, got two cards. That's one more than I would normally get. I got Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. This seems like it's continuing right on with what that told me. Like I said, this Queen of Pentacles, this is Capricorn energy. This is the other half of the equation to that King of Pentacles. So we got counterparts here in the physical sense, in the being physically combined together sense, whether this is representing wife or a person that they're building their life around or that you're building your life around. This is feeling more like your energy here. This is a new opportunity presenting itself. It is a physical, tangible, real world, I can touch it kind of an opportunity. Uh, it looks like there is some sort of a choice here between wife and new physical opportunity that presents itself. I'm going to clarify this and find out what else I can see here. Tell me more about this Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. Why is that the shared energy? Hmm. Yeah, you don't say. Man, I hate it when they make me the bearer of bad news here. Seems to happen to me quite a bit, which makes sense. I'm, people don't come to watch me when things are going great, when it's all peaches and cream. You don't really need a tarot reading to tell you what the hell's going on in your relationship. Usually people come and see me when things have taken a left turn abruptly and now they don't know what the hell is going on and they're trying to get some idea of that or some closure about that and I feel like this is having me break some news that you may not already have right now. On the bottom of the deck here underlying this Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles energy, I have the Empress. This is the mother of the tarot deck. She's always pregnant, so she's always giving birth to something. In a relationship reading, she represents the birth of something new, usually the birth of a new relationship. I do see new opportunity for something physical presenting itself. While there's wife, you significant other that I'm committed to energy here. Right under this Empress, I have the Knight of Wands, which is sometimes referred to as the player of the tarot deck. This is some bullshit kind of energy most of the time. it can It's very fast energy. It's about rushing forward and taking some rapid, passionate action on something there's a lot of passion and desire for. This can be somebody who comes rushing in all passionately and tells you everything you want to hear in order to get what they want. And then they rush away somewhere else all passionately and tell that person what they want to hear in order to get what they want there too. And they come back and forth playing both sides of the fence. This can be a non-committal kind of an energy in the sense that it, it could be someone who doesn't have the ability to stay fully committed to what they said they wanted. So they say they want something, they're gung-ho about it, they start taking all this passionate action to make it happen, and then for some reason they pull back and go a different direction abruptly. I'm feeling player. I'm feeling we got some new connection started here in the midst of already being in a committed connection. I have the five of pentacles next. Fives are conflict and change. This is Taurus energy. This is abandonment. This is being cast aside. This is being left out in the cold. This is a breakup kind of an energy here. Probably because something new got birth and there's a player happening here. Well... When I clarify Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, High Priestess, Four of Wands, the Moon, and the King of Cups. Okay, there's, there's so much connecting all over the place here. I got to get ahead of myself again for a second. That Knight of Wands we just looked at is one of the last cards that came out for your person when they got two for their final card. That was one of them. Ah, I got King of Cups out here. <clears throat> I got Queen of Cups as your person's central energy. So I've seen King and Queen of Pentacles, now King and Queen of Cups. I got two separate couples here. I'm getting the feeling that somebody is a part of both of these couples. Ah, this, I'm just going to start at the beginning. <laughs> 
High Priestess, this is she who knows. This is your intuition. This is your gut feelings. This is that piece of you that can connect to the stuff that is beyond us. She sits in front of the veil of consciousness. So she she has access to all the information you and I as humans don't have access to. <clears throat> Excuse me. She sees everything. She knows everything. The problem with her is she doesn't always tell us everything. Sometimes there's just stuff we're not meant to know. Sometimes there's stuff we don't need to know until it's time. At which point she clues you in through your intuition, through gut feelings, through signs, synchronicities, a dream that has a message in it, something like that. She's like that internal knowing where you don't have any actual way to know. You just know. In and of herself, she can represent that there's information that you don't have access to that you're not privy to just yet. This could just represent that you had some weird feeling that something fishy's going on and maybe you couldn't even put your finger on exactly what it is but you knew something's up. If your person that you're with and that you know incredibly well starts having a bunch of fear, worry, anxiety, mm, craziness going on in their head where they can't shut their head up and they're really worried about something, you're going to be able to tell that. You may not know why they're worried. You may ask them what's wrong and they tell you nothing, mm, but you know. I'm going to skip a card for a second. I have the moon here, which is also fear, worry, and anxiety, a lot like this Nine of Swords. Sometimes this can represent, I'm having fear, worry, and anxiety because I have all this uncertainty. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm on the right path or not. I don't know if this was even the right path to begin with. Did I make a wrong turn? Should I go back? And it's like that level of not knowing is enough to give you fear, worry, and anxiety. When the moon's out, it's dark outside, so things can be hidden in the dark. That's another meaning of this card, something being hidden in the dark, some secret being kept, something going on that you're not aware of yet. So I've got both cards in the deck that can represent some sort of a secret or some, some stuff going on that you don't actually know about yet. And I have both of them here already this early in the reading when we're talking about a new opportunity sitting right beside this person I'm building my life with. And this, all this, like wanting to hold on to a connection and not lose it. And husband apparently doing sneaky, deceptive shit. Son of a... Got the Four of Wands next. Which is the card that I just skipped over here in the shared energy that's affecting you both. So I'm just going to explain it to you here. This is Aries energy. Fours are about stability. So this is stability of the home, stability of the family life, stability of the connection between the two of you. These four wands represent 1111, which is not just the number on my cool sweatshirt here. This is the number of manifesting. This is about the thing that someone is trying to manifest actually physically appears in reality. It's like it's here, it's present, and it's stable in the physical reality. It's tied to this wife, person I'm building a life with type of an energy here. So this is telling me that there is a commitment here. There's a couple of cards that indicate like marriage or like living together type energy. Four of Wands is one of them. The Hierophant is one of them. And we've alluded to the other one, which would be the Ten of Pentacles that the King and Queen of Pentacles built. So that's the only card I'm actually missing here is the Ten of Pentacles. I don't have that yet. We're still early. But I've got all the references to it. There is a commitment between the two of you. There is stability in, in the physical sense between the two of you. In the relationship sense, at least, it appears. But then surrounding that is some stuff going on that you don't know. A secret being kept. Some information you aren't privy to. And both of these cards can also represent your intuition like slapping you upside the head going dude pay attention it's like this is feeling like you got some some inkling that something ain't right final clarify here is the king of cups this is either scorpio or pisces energy this will be the person that you have all this love and emotions for they have love and emotions for you but they don't wear their heart on their sleeve the king of cups doesn't publicly broadcast usually what he's feeling about something so this can be a person that's madly in love with you and you don't know because they don't tell you this can be a person who is going through emotional turmoil and we got some mental turmoil going on and you don't know like they have a good poker face it's not readily apparent by reading their body language or picking up a vibe off of them they're really hard to read hmm. it's disturbing 
already that I've got King and Queen of Pentacles here. And King is tied to sneaky, deceptive behavior. And there's all this other stuff between the two of them, and they're separated here. I'm missing the Ten of Pentacles, which is about being physically combined together. That's missing. So there, again, is another clue of a separation. There's all this unknown, secretive stuff going on around the stability of this connection. And then I've got King over here with, in the center of his energy, is Queen of Cups. And a different type of a counterpart here. This doesn't feel like you don't know that they love you. It feels like they're they're not publicly broadcasting how they feel about someone else is what this is feeling like. Now, this is the early stage of the reading, and I'll be totally straight with you. It's not uncommon at this point that I don't have all the data yet. I don't I don't fully understand exactly what this is telling me, although I feel like I got a pretty damn good idea right now. I will come back to this shared energy as I go through your energy, Gemini, because then I can see how it applies to you. I'll come back to it again as I go through your person's energy, because then I can see how it applies to them. First card in your energy is the most important, Gemini, for you. It is the Five of Wands. Central to your energy, we have the Star. And your final card is the Knight of Pentacles. This five of wands is Leo energy. Like I said, fives are conflict, fives are change. This is a conflict in desires. In other words, it's an internal conflict where a piece of you wants this one thing and another piece of you wants this other thing and you're torn between the two. You're like internally conflicted about what it is that you actually want and you're pulling yourself in different directions at the same time here. Sometimes that can represent there's an internal conflict in the connection where you're pulling one way and they're pulling towards something different and you guys are pulling against each other instead of both pulling in the same direction. It's in your energy, so I would assume this is your internal conflict, but it is relatively common that your whole first column will end up being your person's bullshit showing up on your side just because what they're doing is affecting you so much. So I'm going to clarify this. Tell me more about the Five of Wands, please. Why is that here? It's the first card in Gemini energy. April 2024. We got a bunch of extra ones here. Let me get these in order if I can. Oh man. Send me out a thing. You can go next thing you. One more in here. Yeah, we had a big explosion here. Wow. On the bottom of the deck, underlying this five of wands internal conflict strength this is another leo energy here leo major arcana this tells me that you are going through a very difficult situation right now and it's requiring all of your internal strength just to make it through this you have the internal strength to make it through it you're just being kind of forced to dig down deep inside yourself and find it and tap into it and use it this can sometimes represent a person who's trying to tame this beast inside themselves, like they're trying to rein a piece of themselves in, hold a piece of themselves back, like they're struggling against a piece of themselves so they don't make, you know, some kind of hasty, harsh decision and make some kind of a mistake that they regret later. It, yeah, it, it could be that. It could be being not with them or finding out the truth and having that exposed like that causes an internal conflict it could be a piece of you wants to just strangulate them and you're trying not to and another piece of you loves them to death and possibly trying not to there even the page of pentacles right under that this is news messages and communications about some physical tangible real world opportunity presenting itself it's carrying the ace of pentacles here so this is either communication about that physical opportunity and maybe you found some of that and that's created this difficult situation. Sometimes this can represent an energy of planning for the future, but this would be like not a fully developed plan. This would be like beginning stages of some kind of a plan for the future where I'm just like talking about it and thinking it through right now. I haven't actually done it yet. <sighs> Ten of Wands is behind that Sagittarius energy. This is a very heavy burden being carried here. It is a 10, and in tarot, 10s are completion energy. So this is supposed to be the completion of the burden. This is supposed to be the spot where you lay this burden down and move on without it. It's looking like you had some sort of a plan with them, and now everything is, uh, is thrown into a, a cluster here. 
I do have Queen of Wands behind that. Feels like it's connected to this is a bold, passionate, fiery, determined person that knows exactly what she wants. She goes after what she wants with fiery determination. Like she doesn't take no for an answer. This would represent a person that there is attraction toward. Like someone who's viewed as sexy and vivacious and charming and charismatic and fun to be around and like the life of the party and there's attraction toward them and nine of swords right behind that which is the overall energy of the reading that's gemini energy of fear worry anxiety stress thinking about something a lot with fear and anxiety and worry behind the thinking this is mm, man 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 the devil behind that. This is some toxic energy here. We got some bad stuff going on here. This is a this is a feeling of being trapped by something. Feeling like I can't escape from this connection. Or something about this connection has control over me. And I don't have control over it. These are the same two people from the lover's card here. So this can indicate that there's toxicity in this connection. Notice here though. They have chains around their neck. And they're chained to this podium that the devil sits on like they're not here by choice they're here because they have to be they're stuck in it and they can't leave but being in this distorted energy has distorted these people they've grown horns and tails so this is there's something about this connection that is not right and it's almost like uh, I'm, i know about this person now and i'm stuck stuck in this and still can't escape from it and now i'm in mental anguish about it this can be obsessive energy this can be like i'm i'm thinking about this to the point that it's becoming obsessive and it's controlling my mind and i can't control my own mind it's got control of me i can't get this person out of my head and i had this plan that i was about to do and now the whole thing is burdened by her in the background there could be a piece of you that still wants to go through with what your initial plan was and now there's another piece of you that doesn't know if you can or not when i clarify this internal conflict this five of wands i get page of wands knight of swords six of pentacles the emperor and the ten of swords and it feels to me like i have these out of place here because when they when i shuffled some of them came out some of them stayed in the deck and i had to dig for them i'm switching this around because it feels right this page of wands is news and messages and communication about passion and desire. So passionate messages, passionate communications. This is also the minor arcana version of the fool. This is someone who has the willingness to take the very first steps down a brand new path towards something there's passion and desire for. A lot of times those first steps are communicating. This would be like expressing desire, expressing interest, communicating what it is that I want. Could be that you uncovered something like that. Could be that's what your person was doing and it's affecting you. Knight of Swords is next. This is the fastest knight in the deck. This is rushing forward, taking some rapid, decisive action on something. Usually, this ain't the person who reads the instruction manual first. This is the person who just dumps the box of shit out, starts slapping stuff together, and then they realize, like, wait a minute, I got pieces left. And then they look at the instructions and realize, oh, I did this wrong. And now in order to get it apart, I got to break it. And it's like, yeah, this is like leap before you look type of an energy here. Very fast, spontaneous, abrupt, impulsive kind of an energy. A lot of times this will be a person who just does something and they don't think about it first. And they don't think about it until after they've already done it. And then it's too late. Like I had the willingness to take some steps. I did it. Now it's too late and I've already done it. Now I'm fearful and worried and anxious because I don't want to lose what I have here. And I don't want to lose this commitment with you. Again, like they're the ones that did some sneaky, deceptive stuff. I got all this commitment, happy home, happy family type energy here. Stability type energy. And then this abrupt BS and then something being kept secret because i don't want to lose everything i think that's why we're seeing emperor here this is the aries major arcana card this is another energy of control we saw the devil that's the other energy of control that's about something else being in control of you this is a person 
who's taking control, taking charge of the situation, putting together a plan to get what they want, executing the plan to get what they want, setting the rules, setting the boundaries, calling the shots. This is a person who's in control, and it looks like the person in control is the person who didn't think first and just did something pretty spontaneously that they shouldn't have done. Six of Pentacles is the next Taurus energy. This is supposed to be an energy of balance. It can be generosity, reciprocity. This can represent equal give and take, balancing a connection out. Mm. It can also represent the merchant, meaning your person, this person that's in control here, the merchant giving to two people in the physical sense. That's probably the spontaneous thing that they did. And now they're trying to like, even the way his chair, his throne is on this card. It's like you can't see any of the background behind him because it's so damn big. This is like, what's going on back here is none of your concern. That's all me right there. So just nothing to see here. Nothing to see here because I don't want you to find out that I'm giving to two people. I'm already worried that you're going to and I don't want to lose you. Possible that I don't want to lose you and I don't want to lose the other person. It's feeling much more like I don't want to lose you. Ten of Swords, final clarifier for that Five of Wands internal conflict. This is more Gemini energy. This is an ending. This is a swift, painful ending to something. Sometimes this is an ending you don't see coming, which is why the swords end up in your back, not your front. Sometimes this is an ending in betrayal, which is why the swords are in your back, getting stabbed in the back and betrayed by someone who's giving to two people and trying to act like they're in control of things. Mm. That's That looks like internal conflict is probably theirs as well because they're probably internally conflicted between this person I'm already building my life with and this new opportunity that presents itself. And I think they did something already. Whether or not you have found out about it yet is the part I'm not sure of. Central to your energy, the star. This is the Aquarius Major Arcana card. This is a card of healing. It's a card of hope, renewal. Like this, this is about having the hope that whatever has gone wrong here can be healed and fixed and put back together. In a love reading, this can indicate that at some point you felt like this person is the one for you. Maybe still feel like that. Could be why you're internally conflicted. Let me be clear, like this is not God or the universe or spirit or source or the divine or however you personally view that. It's not factual data coming down from them telling me that, oh, they are supposed to be together. Like this is the one for them. It's not what that means. It means that it's, it's in your energy. So at some point you probably felt like this person is the one for me. This is also the card that comes immediately after the tower in the sequence of the major arcana cards. So you don't get to the star energy without going through a tower of some kind first where some important structure in your life comes crashing down all around you. When that happens and nothing's the same as it was the day before, it's really hard to see the path moving forward from there. And that's kind of what the star represents. It's that guiding light, that divine light from the universe lighting the way for you so you can see your path moving forward. This is where hope comes from. This is where healing comes from. And it's central to your energy. So this feeling like you probably do know about this problem at this stage. Tell me about the star. Otherwise, there wouldn't really be a need to hope that it could be healed. So tell me about the star. Yeah. On the bottom of the deck, the Empress again. So there's the birth of something new again. This can also represent the rebirth of a connection. So yes, the birth of something new has caused the problem. This could be the case where now I'm trying to maintain the hope that we can rebirth this, that we can heal this. Four of Cups under that Cancer energy. This is being emotionally discontent, not fully happy with what's right here in front of you and daydreaming about this other thing, this other cup that you think is going to lead to your happiness and your fulfillment. Notice they're staring at three cups. Three cups has two different meanings. First, it can be being united and celebrating or being reunited and celebrating. And you're staring at that and you're not happy with it because you don't have it yet. And that could be the thing that you're daydreaming about, hoping that I can get this connection back and we can be reunited and reconcile this situation. The other thing it could mean 
is that I'm staring at three cups because three cups of love are in this picture. There's been the birth of something new here. There's been some new opportunity that was kept secret. And now I can't get that other person out of my head because you brought some other cup into our scenario and clogged it all up here. And I'm hoping that we can get past that. But man, I don't know that we can get past that because not only are you not happy about it and probably can't get it out of your head, there's five swords behind it. We already referenced this when I saw the Seven of Swords earlier. These five swords are Aquarius energy. Again, fives are conflict. This is a conflict in communicating. So sometimes this can be a big fight, big argument, bigger words being spoken, words being used like weapons to cut each other. This can also represent a betrayal. It, it can, at its core, it's like a mentally and psychologically painful situation or event. It could be a person who has this winning at all cost mentality, like collateral damage is fine. As long as I get what I want, I don't care what happens to anybody else. Taking care of me is the most important thing, and I'm going to get what I want. So if that means you got to get hurt in the process, sorry about your luck. Could be you're dealing with someone like that. It could just represent that there's a betrayal and there was the birth of something new. And as of right now, you probably can't get your mind off of this other person and the betrayal of that. There is still the underlying Virgo energy of the Eight of Pentacles, which is a card of work. Putting in the work, time, effort, and energy on something in order to get what you want. Being willing to put in the work, time, effort, and energy to heal this, to rebirth it, to try and get it back. That's probably part of where your internal conflict is. Part of you is probably like, you know what, screw this. And another part of you is like, but I want to work on it and I hope that we can fix it. When I clarify the star, I get the Knight of Wands again. Six of Cups. Ten of Cups. Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, see, that's right in the center of it. I got Six of Cups, Ten of Cups. A lot of love and emotions here. A lot of emotions involved, very deep emotional connection. This is everybody's goal in love and relationships, that happily ever after, that happy fairy tale ending that we all want. Happy fairy tale romance. This represents the past, thinking about the past, reminiscing about the past, the good old days, the way it used to be. This tells me that there's there's connection here. This is a deep connection between the two of you. There's history to this connection. And there's this idea of true love and happily ever after with this person and there probably has been for a period of time and that's probably where this hope is coming from like this wanting to heal it and rebirth it is coming from the problem is what's surrounding that energy that has all this emotional depth and all this history to it because what's surrounding it is the player that wishy-washy in and out back and forth bullshit energy and a new physical opportunity presenting itself. That physical opportunity sitting out here beside you in the shared energy with secrets, things being hidden in the dark, stuff you don't know about going on. And I think that's, if you don't know about it, you're finding out now. And if you already did know about it, which it's kind of looking like you did, it's looking like you're still conflicted about this. Man, I'm wondering if this is even the first time that something like this has happened. I do have that card of the past tied to the player. And I also have the card of the past is sitting right beside this Knight of Swords, this very abrupt, impulsive action taker here. It's almost like saying there's a history of impulsive erratic behavior here on this person's part sometimes this also gets referred to as the narcissist of the deck and if that's the case and we're reading this that way i got the narcissist and the player here both in the same person hopefully that's not the case but it's here it's entirely possible so i'm throwing it out there just in case that means anything to you if not take what resonates leave it behind if it doesn't this, man, this is really looking like a person who, like, new opportunity presented itself. It made my wand stand up and point, so I had to go run and do something about that. Probably didn't think it through first. Possibly even didn't feel like they had to think it through first, because, damn it, I can do whatever I want. I'm the one running this thing. I'm in charge. Hmm. This Ten of Cups is screaming at me. It's like, 
there is a negative side to every one of these cards. There's positive and negative components to every card in the tarot deck. The negative piece to the Ten of Cups is that fairy tale component because we all want that so badly that we'll delude ourselves. We'll lie to ourselves. We'll, we'll ignore the red flags that are just slapping us in the face. We'll sweep shit under the rug and pretend like it didn't happen because if any of that crap is true, then this true love happily ever after piece of what I feel here isn't true either. And I want that to be true. So I got to ignore all that stuff to protect this belief. The problem is when it's a false belief and it's not actually real, and it gets harder and harder to get out of that false belief the longer you stay in it. And I do have the card of the past here suggesting that there is history here. So it's possible you've been in that belief system for a while. That's the thing about the, the star though. It comes after the tower. In the tower, sometimes that's the collapse of your relationship. Sometimes it's just the collapse of a belief system you have. This mental model of the world that you're operating from. Like the map you're navigating with turns out to not be right and the whole thing shatters in front of you so it can be the shattering of this belief that this person is the one for me that this person and and me are going to make this happily ever after it could be the shattering of that belief strictly because of some new opportunity showing up in front of a person who's already prone to do erratic wishy-washy type crap final card in your energy gemini is the knight of pentacles this is the slowest moving knight in the deck. So I've got the two fastest knights in the deck out here, and now the slowest knight in the deck. This is very slow forward movement, very slow progress on something, one step at a time. It's like drip feeding something, you know? It's like just drip, drip, drip. It's not getting it all right now. This is like a really frustrating energy. It makes you want to pull your hair out. It's like, I want something, and I want it like yesterday but I'm getting the snail's pace here and it seems like no progress is happening. Nothing's moving. It's really hard to tell the difference between this and the hanged man when you're going through this. It, it feels like nothing's happening, but something is happening. It would be like trying to watch my hair grow. You could, you could watch it the whole time I'm doing this reading and it's going to look like it didn't grow at all. It is growing. It's just growing so damn slow that you can't watch it and see it. You, you can come back in a couple weeks and it'll be longer but it's like it's so slow and that's kind of what this is ha that's what this is like you're waiting on something here this is like forced patience is what it's feeling like now it can also represent a person who knows what they're supposed to do and doesn't actually do it for some reason and likewise it can be the opposite of that a person who knows what they're not supposed to do but does it any damn way tell me about this knight of pentacles why is this the last card in gemini's energy please Ooh, ooh, ooh. You gotta be kidding me. Bottom of the deck. Eight of Wands. Okay. Oh, this is Sagittarius energy. This is the second fastest moving energy in the whole deck. So this does not feel like we're talking about slow progress. Because we got way too much fast energy out here. The only card faster than this is the Chariot. That's the only fast moving energy I'm missing. I got Knight of Swords, Knight of Wands, two fastest knights. This is faster than both of them. This is like a lot of energy coming at somebody all at once. This can be like, it's just too much to process all at once. And now I'm overwhelmed because too much is happening all at one time. I do see mental anguish, fear, worry, anxiety, mind out of control. This is too much to process because I don't want to let go of this commitment. I don't want to lose this. Could be that. This can also represent rapid back and forth passionate communication happening. This can represent rapid forward movement or rapid progress on something that there's a lot of passion and desire for. I do see a lot of fast moving energy. This can be travel over great distances. Um, it can just be a whole lot of wand energy happening at once. I got king of wands behind it. Okay, so now I've seen three different sets of king and queen king and queen of pentacles i got king and queen of cups and i saw queen of wands at some point in the story on the bottom of the deck who's like behind all of this in your your very first column i believe it was now i got king of wands here this is the counterpart to that queen of wands bold passionate fiery determined knows what he wants goes after it 
I'm going to find a way to get it or I'm going to make a way to get it. Very driven, motivated, determined, ambitious type of a person, but it is the pinnacle of the wand suit. The wands represent passion, desire, sexual energy. So this is the pinnacle of that suit. It's someone who's not just driven and motivated in the normal sense. They're driven and motivated by passion, desire, and sexual energy. And I got a lot of sexual energy right here. Person who knows what they're supposed to do and doesn't do it or doesn't knows what they're not supposed to do, does it any damn way. I'll be damned. King and queen of wands right back to back. This is counterparts in that passion, desire, sexual energy suit. A lot of attraction, a lot of desire here. That's where the opportunity got presented. This is someone that there's already like the hots for. Someone who's attractive and a physical opportunity presents itself with them. And yeah, right behind it, nine of swords. We just saw that overall energy, fear, worry, and anxiety. This is them stressing out because they're fearful and worried that what they did is going to come out. It happened really fast. Yeah, there's a, there's a burden here. They're burdened with all this mental anguish because of what they did. Yeah, it's funny. I got to show you that because right behind that, that burden, temperance. This is the Sagittarius Major Arcana card. I don't know if I said it, but Ten of Wands is Sagittarius energy. Nine of Swords is Gemini energy. The King and Queen of Wands are like Sag and Leo or Aries and Leo. Uh, this is this is tempering yourself. This is patience, but this is tempering yourself. Like th the time for them to temper themselves should have been before they took this action, not after the fact. Th this is also sometimes like a reconciliation energy. It's it's patience sometimes, but this in tarot water represents love and here the love has been separated into two different cups like separation happening and here the angel is recombining the love blending it back together like trying to reconcile the relationship that's probably underlying both of you i would say it's hard to tell yet haven't gotten to their energy there's just a lot of their funk showing up on your side when i clarify this person who knew what they should do but didn't do it or knew what they shouldn't do and did it anyway. I get the three scariest cards in the tarot deck. I get the devil, the tower, and death. I have n and I've done thousands of readings at this point, and I have never once gotten the devil, the tower, and death all back to back clarifying something. It's never happened. Like these are literally the three scariest cards i think the only one that could also be fit into that bill is the ten of swords which is already out here in your energy nine of swords as the overall energy so there's a lot of negative powerful negative energy here the the devil is like i said it's capricorn's major arcana it's it's an energy of control but it's something being in control of you not you being in control of it this is toxic energy this is obsession it's an addiction it's a feeling of being trapped by something that has control over me and i can't break free from it it's telling me there's toxicity in this connection it's telling me that there's toxicity tied to your person because they know what they're not supposed to do and they do it anyway because they're not in control of themselves their wand is in control of them they're they're obsessed probably with sex, passion, desire, obsessed with chase and tail, obsessed with like the conquest. They're obsessed with something in an unhealthy way, passion, desire related, because I got the Knight of Wands and the Page of Wands in the same row with the devil. And that Page of Wands, the, the willingness to take the first step is tied to very abrupt decision making, like not thinking it through first. I don't think that they can contain it. Which is, don't take, don't get me wrong. That's not an excuse justifying why they do it. I'm just saying they aren't in control of themselves. And if you're thinking that you're going to build the happily ever after with a person who can't contain themselves and can't control themselves, mm, probably not going to work out. Next, I have the tower, which I knew the tower had happened. Because I got the star out here, and you don't get to the star without the tower. This comes first, and this comes next. 
it's the collapse of something. This is the collapse of everything you had in the past based on some rapid decision-making, decisive action where it wasn't thought through first. This is the collapse of the connection, the collapse of a belief system you had about the connection. Oh, man. I, I've got here in the center six of cups the past history history of impulsive decision making that didn't think it through first history of towers coming down shattering beliefs shattering lives for people and then i get death scorpio's major arcana card this is the ending to something it's something dying so it can be reborn again in a different way this is a painful transition period a painful transformation process or just the ending to the this ten of cups happy fairy tale belief system that you have here because surrounding this idea of yeah, dropping it can't even hold it and it lands right beside death and the ace of pentacles opportunity new opportunity what's surrounding this happily ever after here in your energy is the emperor the person who's in control of it all the person who's controlling and dictating policy and death like endings and pain it's like is that really happily ever after is that if if you're honest with yourself and you stop and think about what your idea of true love is and now you take that picture and juxtapose it right beside what you have do they match? Is that a match? Like we're playing that little kid's card game memory. Is that really a match? Or do you got to put those face down and pick again? Because it looks to me like you got to pick again. I got a person giving to two people in the physical sense because I got a new opportunity present itself. And the only thing that doesn't have anything in the row with it, this, this one is missing the last card in the row. There's a gap. And the next thing I have here is death. That's why there's a gap. The person giving to two had a new opportunity and boom, there's nothing but death. This one has nothing in the row with it at all. It's all by itself. Ten of Swords, swift, painful ending, ending you didn't see coming, ending in betrayal. I'm hoping like hell that I have totally screwed this reading up and that's not what's going on for you. But that's your energy in this connection. I'm scoot this over and get some more room and look at your person's energy because for them, first card is the most important. We got Eight of Wands. Queen of Cups, and their final card came out as two at the same time. Knight of Wands, Ten of Wands. Notice anything about your person's energy? Wands, 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 and one cup, a person that ain't you. A lot of passion, a lot of desire, a lot of sexual energy, and a person that ain't you, and they're riddled with fear, worry, and anxiety because there's, there's their person they're building their life with you and this new opportunity and the secrets that they're keeping around this stability that the two of you have and these secret feelings that they have that they're not expressing probably telling you that there's nothing wrong no i'm just worried like crazy but i'm not going to tell you about what and i'm not even going to tell you that i'm worried because i don't want you to know this first card is the most important for them eight of wands sagittarius energy like I said, second fastest energy in the whole deck. Very fast forward movement on something there's a lot of passion, desire for. Can be rapid back and forth passion and communicating. Can be travel. This could just be, oh shit, there's so much happening all at one time. So much sexual energy coming at me all at once. So much everything coming at me all at once that it's overwhelming. Tell me about this. It's still on the bottom of the deck from your side. Tell me about this Eight of Wands. Why is this here for Gemini? This romantic person of interest in April. Yeah, you probably just saw me turn that one right side up. I don't read reversals, so whenever one comes out upside down, I just turn it right side up. Normally, don't even really notice I'm doing it because I just do it that way. Unless I get yelled at. Like it, I, it's more like... Less getting yelled at, because it's not like I hear a voice. It's more like when you touch your tongue to a 9-volt battery, it like jolts you. I feel that when I'm not supposed to turn it right side up. And that didn't happen. So, on the bottom of the deck, 
clarify this eight of wands i get four of cups cancer energy not being fully emotionally happy not being fully emotionally content with what's in front of me mm, got three cups in front of me so yes i'm united with you but i can't stop thinking about this other person that i think is really going to lead me to my happiness and fulfillment I notice there's three cups here yes i'm united with you but there's another cup that i can't quit thinking about and i'm overwhelmed with it the empress the birth of something new this is them waiting on that to come in here. Three of Pentacles. See, but they're doing all of this. And in the background of what they're doing is looming this teamwork and collaboration and working together as equals with you to build something of value. Again, King and Queen of Pentacles do that and they build the Ten of Pentacles. So that's typically what you're building. This is like laying the foundations for that life together, that building that legacy together. So they're already doing that with you when they birth something new. And that's why I got five of swords right behind it. Aquarius energy, conflict, change, conflict and communicating, fights, arguing. This is a betrayal. This is winning at all costs. Like the, setting up a situation that's stacked in my favor to where it's unfair and one-sided in my favor. And it's against you and eh, tough shit for you. <sighs> when I clarify this Eight of Wands, Seven of Cups, Nine of Cups, Page of Swords, Nine of Pentacles. I'm, eh, I want to slap this person for you. Seven of Cups is Scorpio energy of options and choices, but confusion about their options and choices. They got a lot of different cups here, a lot of different stuff they could choose, a lot of different ways they could play this situation. There's a lot of emotions involved here, but they don't want to do something that's a mistake. They don't want to make a mistake here and pick the wrong cup. So there's some confusion. There, these clouds of smoke can represent clouded judgment, clouded decision making, can be intoxication. I do have the devil out here, which could indicate that we got somebody who's got an addiction and that's causing clouded judgment could be somebody who just doesn't think shit through first this can even represent somebody who has like a, a drug or an alcohol problem especially because the devil's out here and because of the next card i'll get to in a second this could just represent that they're blowing clouds of smoke because they're trying to put up a smoke screen because they're worried you're going to find out that they had other options and that they they took some fast movement on those other options could be that they're worried you're going to find out, so they're blowing smoke up your ass trying to obscure your vision, which could be what this hiding something in the dark is about, some information that hasn't been revealed yet. Maybe your intuition's cluing you in, and they're trying to get you to not trust your own intuition. And like, because you don't have the facts, you didn't actually see it, so you don't really know, you just feel it. And that could be them trying to confuse the issue here, make you doubt yourself. Next card to clarify, Eight of Wands, Nine of Cups. So I got two cups energies here, but mm, this is a singles energy. The Ten of Cups, like that's over here on your side. This being combined together emotionally, fully happy and content and in love with each other emotionally. This is singles energy emotionally. This is I, like, I don't need another person to make me feel whole or happy or loved or worthy of love. I do all that for myself. But on the negative side, this can be a person who's very self-centered. Like this is a card of personal happiness and personal wish fulfillment. And that being more important to me than what makes us happy or what makes you happy for that matter. What makes me happy is what I'm concerned with. This can also represent someone who is overindulgent, self-indulgent, could be a person who has a drinking or a drug problem, especially because the devil's out here, especially because I got another card that can represent being intoxicated. Could be that they were just nice and wasted and did some stuff spur of the moment because of the state that they were in. Could even be that they got a history of that kind of behavior. Devil, again, I mean... It's there for a reason. Page of Swords. This is, again, more communication energy. It's news, messages, communication. It's also an energy of a person who's trying to learn something, who's trying to figure something out. This can sometimes be an energy of spying and snooping around on somebody, trying to figure out what the hell is going on with them. Sometimes that can represent that your intuition was driving you nuts 
and you could tell they're blowing smoke up your ass so you start snooping trying to investigate and find out what's going on sometimes hell, what i'm doing right now qualifies as the page of storage because i'm snooping and investigating what's going on in your connection and i'm uncovering all kinds of shit so that could be what's going on here this could represent an external person that's not you that's not your person but maybe they know both of you and they saw something that's going on and maybe they came to tell you about it maybe they're just worried then that you're getting the clue something's up because your intuition and they're worried that you're going to start snooping around and investigating and going to uncover what their personal happiness and wish fulfillment was it's right across the aisle from death here so it's possible that that's what happened something got found out one way or another and that ended things but their final clarifier here for the eight of wands is nine of pentacles more singles energy this is virgo energy i don't know if i said it this is pisces energy these are both single energies. There's two in the deck. They're both right here in your person's first column. This doesn't always represent a person who is physically single. Sometimes this can represent a person who's not single. This could be a person who's building their life together with someone. I mean, I got King, King of Pentacles here. I'm in a committed connection with someone, building my life around them, and I'm being sneaky and deceptive and lying and cheating and stealing and getting away with shit because I'm presenting myself in the physical world as if I am single when I'm not. Central to your person's energy, Queen of Cups. This is Cancer energy. This ain't you. This is somebody else that they have emotions for here or that they're getting emotions from. That would be either a feminine water sign or just some person who fits this loving, nurturing, like mothering type of an energy. Why is the Queen of Cups central to this person's energy, please? Okay. Looks like she's important, whoever she is. I think this one went first. Man, it's like a lot here. <clears throat> Bottom of the deck. Queen, or excuse me, Ace of Cups. Yeah, the Queen of Cups, this person that they're getting all these emotions from. This is the new person. This is a new beginning in love and emotions. This is a new opportunity for emotions. When we saw that four of cups a minute ago in their energy on the bottom of the deck, there's that cup hanging in the air that they're waiting on or that they're sidetracked by. That's them. Page of Pentacles. And after this new emotional thing here, I get the communication about the physical opportunity presenting itself and it probably even has them at the beginning stages of a not fully developed plan for the future <sighs> plan about combining together like temperance is patience yes but it, it could be tempering themselves it can even represent like blending two things together to make something new i got king of cups and now queen of cups here that you were already king and queen of pentacles, and that was you guys. I saw king and queen of wands, and now king and queen of cups. And it's like, man, it's like they're blending themselves together with someone else. Yeah, they do. Because then there's nine of swords. Like, Gemini energy, fear, worry, anxiety. Again, it's the overall energy. I've seen this more times than I would like. Things like They did it, and then they worried about it after they did it. Because they didn't want it to come out. They didn't want to get found out. When I clarify Queen of Cups, I get strength. We already saw that on your side. Ten of Wands. We already saw that on your side. Eight of Wands. We already saw that on your side. And it's their first card. Now we're getting some new ones. The World and the Hanged Man. Strength is the Leo Major Arcana. This is... This is that piece of they're trying to tame that beast inside themselves, trying to rein themselves in and not do something stupid. But they're confused about what to do. And they, there's a lot of emotions here. It could be that they did it already because they couldn't contain themselves and rein themselves in. And now they've created this difficult situation. Like it, it doesn't... It doesn't feel like a pleasant situation for them either. Because when when you do something stupid like that, and then you're keeping it secret and lying about it and lying by omission, and your mind is this out of control, this is not pleasant energy. 
They created the situation, but they're dealing with some difficult stuff right now. They're burdened by what they did. They're burdened also by their own personal happiness and wish fulfillment. Like, this is something that's not, not right for them. It's out of control. I don't think for a minute that that devil energy is solely yours, Gemini. I think that's theirs showing up over here. If you have any devil energy about this, it's shit you've picked up off of them. It's like you can't you can't wrestle with the person that's covered in dog shit without getting dog shit on you. And that's kind of what's happened here. And there's a history here of happily ever after feeling of the one for me feeling. It's possible that you got maybe a little obsessive with that and allowed that to go from healthy to unhealthy in a sense if so it would probably be because you started sweeping shit under the rug that you didn't want to see stuff that they were doing that you didn't want to be true because it would invalidate the way you felt and you didn't want that to happen totally get it i'm just saying i, I think there's um, there is that element of devil in your energy but most of it is them and them being burdened by not being able to control their own need to gratify themselves i got eight of wands which is already in their energy very fast forward movement rapid communication back and forth a lot of energy coming at me all at one time burdened by all of this fast moving energy that's just too much and it overwhelms me and i can't contain myself anymore and then there's the world, the final card of the Major Arcana. This is the ending of one cycle and at the same time, the beginning of the next cycle. This is the ending of something and starting something new after that. There's this energy of being physically single right beside it. Then I have the Hanged Man this is the final clarifier for the Queen of Cups. They're hung up on her. This is progress being halted pisces major arcana no, no forward movement happening things are stuck they're at a dead standstill now the hanged man is hanging upside down because he's trying to look at things from a different perspective a different point of view than he normally would he's trying to figure out why is this stuck how do i get unstuck how do i move forward from here the thing about that is where his focus is like the hanged man is looking at things from a different perspective not looking at myself from a different perspective i'm not looking inside of me like the hermit would i'm looking outside of me i'm looking at the things the people the circumstances the situations all the external stuff that ain't me i'm looking at that for what's the problem not looking at me for what's the problem this isn't like the problem isn't i can't contain myself the problem is hot chicks walk past me and they shouldn't do that you see what i mean it's like they're they're not putting the blame on the right thing this is like helpless victim mentality. Like when somebody pays attention to them and like bats their pretty little eyes at them, they, they can't not do something about that. And it's like, it's not my fault. It's her fault. She shouldn't walk past me looking all good and shit. And then I wouldn't do stupid stuff. Final card for them, the player of the tarot deck, Knight of Wands and the Ten of Wands. So I got the Ten of Wands twice in their energy that heavy burden that they're carrying because they can't stay fully committed to what they say they want when the wind blows and that thing stands up i gotta run down the path and see what it's pointing at Ooh. tell me about this knight of wands ten of wands why is this here in gemini's person's energy thank you i'm ready to get out of their energy i really am like ooh. Bottom of the deck, <laughs> the Empress. Again, the birth of something new comes out of this mm, passionate, driven action. It's just very fast. And there's a burden about that. Now, they can't contain that. And it causes them to birth something new. You know, what gets birthed is a new connection. Two of Cups is Cancer Energy. This is a love connection between two people. I breathe you in, you breathe me in. We're connected but it's a two and in tarot twos represent a choice or a decision of some kind this is a decision emotionally a decision either about the connection with you or a decision between two different cups of love and i see right here in the shared energy wife slash 
committed person I'm building my life with versus new opportunity. You don't have new opportunity until you birth a new opportunity. And there it is, the choice between the two of you. And the choice it looks like they're making is Six of Swords. This is Aquarius energy of moving forward into calmer waters. It's leaving the rough, choppy waters of the past behind, moving away from some painful situation. This is the card that comes after the Five of Swords we've seen a couple of times. The betrayal, the the mentally and psychologically painful situation or event. This is moving away from the pain, leaving the pain in the past, moving away from something and towards something into the future, moving toward what I want. There is an implied choice here, and it goes back to this burden that they have showing up twice here. The stuff in the past has already happened. At this point, they can't change that. Their, their real choice in the matter is, what do I do moving into my future? Do I let the burden that that painful thing caused come forward into the future with me so the burden keeps happening and it keeps weighing me down or do i learn the lesson from that painful thing and carry the lesson forward with me so i don't act that way again i don't know what they're what they're planning on here I do have four of cups. This really looks to me like a person who ain't happy no matter what they have. There's always something that they want. Like there's always some new bright shiny object that they want. And what's like when they're with you, they're not fully happy and they can't quit daydreaming about little Miss Queen of Cups over here. But then they do all that and they end the cycle with you, but then they're still stuck because no matter what, no matter where they run away to, they wake up and there they are right beside themselves. They take their fucking problem with them everywhere they go. They can't escape themselves. But soon do they get with Queen of Cups now. But now they can't get you out of their head. It's like, I wasn't happy with you, so I went with her. And now I'm not fully happy with her because I'm still thinking about you. And now I'm thinking about putting the work, time, effort, and energy in to fix things with you. As I'm now, I'm, now I'm burdened by the actions that I took toward passion and desire. When I clarify that, I get three of pentacles, four of pentacles, very odd, seven of wands. Three and four makes seven. Pentacles, escalating physical energy here. Three is Capricorn energy of teamwork, collaboration, working together is equals to build something of value. You do that when you're king and queen of pentacles and you're like laying the foundations of becoming that, building that ten of pentacles. I think they wanted that and ran toward it, gung-ho, and then new opportunity arose, so they ran toward that, gung-ho, and now they're burdened because they did that when they were building something with you, and now they don't want to lose you, which I saw that here. Fear, worry, and anxiety and stressing out because I don't want you to find out because I don't want to lose this commitment. This It looks like marriage. If not, it's just a very committed relationship. I don't want to lose you because I did sneaky, deceptive, dumb stuff in the middle of having like an actual stable connection with you. And there's them not wanting to lose you and being burdened by this idea of losing you and not wanting to do that. And now personal happiness and wish fulfillment for them is looking different than it did before. This is possible that they did something stupid while they were intoxicated. And maybe they have a history of, of you know, being drunk or high and doing some dumb shit that they regret. It's possible. The final clarifier here is that Seven of Wands. This is more Leo energy. This is a walled-off defensive energy. This is defending their position on something, defending their stance on something, or being willing to fight to protect what it is that they want or what they believe in, fight for this connection even because they don't want to lose you. There's a lot of overwhelming energy that's happened since you found out is what this looks like. <clears throat> Oh man, oh man, oh man. And this is looking like both, yes, they birthed a new connection with someone else and probably chose to walk away from you to get to them, but then 
once they did that, they weren't happy still. And then they started thinking about putting the work in to rebirth this connection with you. And then hoping that we can leave this painful thing that I did in the past, which is probably yet another pattern for them. I'm getting, I'm getting the real strong, like tap on the side of the head that this ain't the first time around the block for them doing dumb shit with you. And it's possible that they have this way of doing something stupid that should end the connection and then somehow schmooze their way back in with you and get you to agree to let's just move that, let's just move on and leave that in the past and not keep bringing it up. I'm sorry, I won't do that again. It feels like that's happened more than one time. Now, if you still have questions you want answered about this situation or your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. When you do, you'll be taken to more Gemini love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.